ghost ships like the Rang Medan and the Mary Celeste are fun little curios. They intrigue and befuddle, but can sometimes be glossed over or forgotten. But certain tales pass on from silly ghost stories to the late at night on the mess deck into legends. Stories so well known and ingrained in maritime lore that they become a very part of the culture. One of those legends is the tale of the Flying Dutchman, a ghost ship to define ghost ships. In the early 1700s, the Dutch East India Company's ships plied the seas from the southern tip of the Cape of Good Hope all the way to the Dutch East Indies, or modern-day Indonesia. But supposedly there is a remnant of the distant past that still prowls the waters to this day. On a stormy night, as a ship rounds the Cape, a sailor might have the great misfortune of witnessing an eerie glow of green. Slowly materializing from the wind and the spray of the tempest, tattered white sails, a beaten and weather-scored hull, and a crew neither living or dead. The Flying Dutchman, doomed to sail through stormy seas for eternity, the very sight of her is an omen of death. It's said that if someone were to hail her, the ship would bring her messages to be sent to shore or to long-dead relatives. Should the crew survive this chance meeting, only misfortune would they have in their future. The first mention of the Flying Dutchman in literature appears in 1790, though it's likely it existed in oral tradition before this. The book travels in various parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa during a series of 30 years and upwards by John MacDonald, a nice short name, had this to say. The weather was so stormy that the sailors said they saw the Flying Dutchman. The common story is that this Dutchman came to the Cape in distress of weather and wanted to get into harbor but could not get a pilot to conduct her and was lost and that ever since, in very bad weather, her vision appears. This was the first mention and one theory to the Dutchman's origin. Other tales hold that the crew committed a heinous crime and that they were stricken by God with a horrible pestilence and doomed to sail the seas until their penance was repaid and their souls were set free. Though whether this crime was murder or piracy is a subject of some debate. The first story written about the vessel appeared in 1821's Blackwood's Edinburgh Magazine. The story went that a Dutch captain, Hendrik van der Decken, was sailing his Amsterdam ported ship around the Cape of Good Hope. It says, She was an Amsterdam vessel and sailed from port 70 years ago. Her master's name was van der Decken. He was a staunch seaman and would have his own way in spite of the devil. For all that, never a sailor under him had reason to complain, though how it is on board with them, nobody knows. The story is this, that in doubling the Cape, they were a long day trying to weather the Table Bay. However, the wind headed them and went against them more and more, and Vanderdecken walked the deck, swearing at the wind. Just after sunset, a vessel spoke him, asking him if he did not mean to go into the bay that night. Vanderdecken replied, May I be eternally damned if I do, though I should beat about here till the day of judgment. And to be sure, he never did go into the bay, for it is believed that he continues to beat about in these seas still, and will do so long enough. This vessel is never seen but with foul weather along with her. This version of the story even inspired a German opera in 1843 called Der Fliegen Hollander, or The Flying Dutchman. It was believed that Captain Vanderdecken was modeled after an actual captain of the Dutch East India Company, a man named Bernard Falk. The man was a very successful and skilled captain who could make the long journey from Europe to the East Indies in incredibly fast times, once as little as three months and four days. He was so successful, in fact, that rumors spread that he had made a pact with the devil to do so. But of course, that wasn't confirmed. There have been several sightings of the Dutchman reported, one very famously being in July of 1881 by none other than Prince George of Wales, future King George V. He was aboard HMS Inconstant near the coast of Australia. He wrote, July 11th at 4 a.m. The Flying Dutchman crossed our bows, a strange red light as of a phantom ship all aglow, in the midst of which light the masts, spars, and sails of a brig 200 yards distant, stood out in strong relief as she came up on the port bow, where also the officer of the watch from the bridge clearly saw her, as did the quarterdeck midshipman, who was sent forward at once to the forecastle. But on arriving, there was no vestige nor any sign 
whatever of any material ship was to be seen, either near or right away to the horizon, the night being clear and sea calm. Thirteen persons altogether saw her. At 10.45 a.m., the ordinary seaman who had this morning reported the Flying Dutchman fell from the foretop mast cross trees onto the top gallant forecastle and was smashed to atoms. But the sightings may never have been confirmed. All the same, they've still found root in our culture as a whole. Very famously, the Flying Dutchman appears in the July 7, 2006 movie Pirate. No, 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 no. Wait, huh? Don't mention the mouse, his spies, they lurk all around us. Shh. Don't mention the... Oh, good save. Uh, the Flying Dutchman has been mentioned in a lot of movies that we won't discuss. Go watch a movie review channel for that. But all the same, the story has been about so long and retold so many times, yet it all remains mostly the same. A ghostly ship with a crew of the damned, a portent of doom, and a sign of the end. But will witnessing the Flying Dutchman sailing your waters really lead to your unfortunate demise? Well, probably not. But, better safe than sorry. The, uh, the Flying Dutchman is real. I've seen it. Oh yeah? Have you? Mm-hmm. On the documentary. Really? Well, what was it called? Oh gosh, you know what? I, I just can't tell you right now off the top of my head. It's on the, it's on the tip of my tongue, but it was, it was very educational. Really? Oh yeah, he was spooky, haunting everyone. It was uh, under the sea. He had a spooky crew, and there were of, of all sorts of uh, oh, what were they? They were they were some sort of aquatic creatures, I believe, like a starfish and a sponge. SpongeBob SquarePants is not a documentary. Oh come on, really? Next, you're going to tell me Santa Claus isn't real either? Maritime horrors, bro. Well, anyways... Dude, Santa is real, right? Don't leave me hanging like this. Fair winds and following seas to you, shipmates. Next, you'll tell me the Pope doesn't have any superpowers.